Uh, this is part two, part one cut off, so if you're confused, I'm sorry. Um, I came to Montana and a bunch of miracles happened. I ended up working for an installer at the Axeman for wood stoves, and I got real familiar with Montana. Uh, it was all over the county and uh, had a pretty good job. It didn't pay enough, but it was a good job. And one day I had to ride my dirt bike in ice and snow up to the work. And my boss drove up in a gold Suburban and handed me the keys and said, why don't you drive this around? You'll be a lot safer. Uh, park that bike in the back until springtime. So I did. Um, I had a girlfriend at the time uh, that I met in Las Vegas subsequently. Um... I used to sell weed out during my trial out on Las Vegas Boulevard. And I got a call and I skateboarded down and I saw this lady that had head to toe tattoos and dreadlocks and um, Nikki Drader. And uh, I didn't realize that she was an angel and uh, was sent to me to really help me at a time when things were super dark. Um, I'm eternally grateful to her for what she did. And she also tattooed my sleeve, which is pretty amazing. So, um, she provided a travel trailer and I had some friends that had property down in Hamilton. So I stayed with, uh, my buddy Matt and I commuted to Missoula every day for work which I didn't realize was costing me like 400 bucks in gas and it was wear and tear on the Suburban. But, um, I felt like I was finally getting grounded and things were going good. And then all of a sudden the trial came up and my attorneys called and they're like, you got to come down for a couple weeks. And, uh, so I'd come down for two weeks and then pre trial. And then they said, we're going to trial. So, I was able to come back, wait until the next September, and then go back down. And that time, the Suburban took a crap on me. And I was stuck in Las Vegas for five months. Ended up meeting some really nice people. My casino executive friend, Mike, and uh, Brandon was my boss. I worked for some movers, perfect movers. And uh, all I wanted to do was come back to Montana all I could think about was Montana, Montana. I got to get back here. That something's waiting for me. So this is where the story takes an amazing turn. Uh, I was surf kayaking Brennan's wave. It's a wave in the middle of town. It's really violent rodeo wave in the springtime. And I'm not the old world champion I used to be I'm 48 now and I haven't been doing as much you know at, as I, I work out and I work really hard but I haven't been kayaking like I used to and uh, I did really well I had a professional photographer I got some great pictures but on the seventh wave I got flipped over and my arm completely almost ripped off uh, was dislocated and uh, broken in two spots so I was the next day in a sling walking around Karis Park with my dog I just got high with some stoner kids that were listening to some obnoxious hip-hop underneath the bridge something told me I need to separate myself from these kids you know so I did, and I was just strolling and enjoying the sunshine and walking my dog. And uh, I walked right into the most beautiful lady I've ever seen in my whole life. When I locked eyes with her, I thought, holy shit, like, it brought me back to, like, Braveheart. <laughs> Like I was killing a bunch of English for her or something. I felt like a Viking or like a 
like a wounded warrior. And I knew I had met my soulmate. I've had a lot of love in my life and I've had a lot of marriages and shitty relationships and finally in Missoula and I just put it out in the universe I'm, I'm what I'm looking for and she completely materialized like weird science or something. <laughs> she was beautiful, intelligent, wealthy. She had everything that every man could ever ask for. I didn't see any red flags. I mean, I was a model. I had my own billboards in Vegas and New York City. I've been on the runway in front of 35,000 people before. And I'm writing a movie for Hollywood. So I figured while I'm meeting my soulmate, and somehow this will all connect and we'll be like a power couple in Hollywood that will literally go from nothing in Montana. Well, she's got everything from being an attorney, but I've got nothing. I live in a 18 foot travel trailer with a shitty suburban and a Chihuahua. I have a brilliant mind. I have a lot of dreams. I have a lot of things I want to do. Um, I don't operate well with computers, but I can ride the hell out of a dirt bike. I can climb El Capitan. I can surf kayak waves the size of your house. So, you know, I could probably send an email. <laughs> so I had also not only met my soulmate, but I had met my partner. I had met my, uh, scribe, my my person that was going to be my ambassador to Quan, man. My ambassador to Quan. I had met her. So, you know, I had a, a shitty past in relationships. And I didn't realize what kind of baggage I had. So right when things were going perfect, I just threw a big lump of self-doubt and crap. And all this shit about old tradition and commitment and trying to buckle somebody down, you know, when you're five months in in the honeymoon stage. And you just feel like, you know, I'm going to go for it because if I don't, somebody else is. And I better just lay it out there. So it's like, you know, I want to move in with you. I want to help you take care of your kids. I want to meet all your friends and I want to go to all your events and I want to fly around the country with you and figure this all out. I want to drive a better car. I want to have a better lunch. <laughs> I want to stop working till my back is broken. I want to work on my dreams. I want to do something real that affects millions of people because they hear a fucking true story. About how somebody had perseverance and survived. How somebody didn't give up when shit was really fucked up. How they just persevered and they knew they've been through battle. They've been through battle. They've been shot at. They've shot at people. They've ridden their dirt bike at death-defying speeds. They've... <laughs> Laughed at the devil in the pale moonlight. <laughs> They've, you know, I've been through living hell and I'm still here shining. I'm still here sharing. I'm not giving up. And if somebody will finally realize what the true potential here is. It's like Jim Carrey, you know, you can't contain the container. I'm going to be something great, whether it kills me or not. And uh, what I realized in all of that is I already am. I'm already an amazing person. I'm a living legend if you look up Skateboard Steve. 
you walk down the street in Vegas and ask a few people if they know who Skateboard Steve is, and there'll be a story. I would give the shirt off my back for people. I would give money I just earned to people. I treated my wife and baby girl like they were queen and princess. I loved everyone unconditionally. No matter if you were a homeless person or a Fortune 500 company owner. That I'm a millionaire in spirit. That I've had it all and I've lost it all. And I've gained it all back again. A lot of people say that, you know, you're arrogant or you're a narcissist or... No, I'm a fucking fighter pilot. You know, you got to be cocky to ride a bike that fast, to climb a mountain that big, to surf a wave or even paddle out. You got to have balls of solid rock. So, you know, narcissist or arrogant or not, my spirit is big. My spirit is huge. When I die, the people that will find out I died will be affected like like Dean Potter, you know, when he died. Everyone in that whole outdoors was affected. So it's not the mark that you leave in life. It's kind of what you leave behind in death. What kind of person were you? What kind of character did you have? How did you operate? What did you think of people? What did they think of you? I mean, we could give two fucks right now, but when you are got your wings and you're up there in heaven, it really matters what people think when you are alive. So I won my case. I got my life back. I lost my family. I came, I met my soulmate, and uh, we were right when it was really good, when it was really good. I had a key to her house, I was getting ready to meet her boys, and was trying to uh, just figure out how it could all work, you know. I was broke. She was wealthy. She had a backstory. I had a backstory. We were trying to make it all work, and we were madly in love. And I had some, like, suspicions or, like, some gut or some some old crap from relationships where I'd just been brokenhearted. And so I projected that on her. I was like, you know, I don't know if you're dating anyone else or seeing anyone else, but I feel left out of your life. And I feel, you know, I was putting all this pressure on her that I, I wanted to be in her life. And I don't know what, if she was ready or if, you know, sometimes 50% of us is still wants to go out on the market. 50% of us is in love with you. I don't know what the situation was. I don't know if I'll ever know. But she just cut it off. And ghosted me. Then when I did try to reach out, she uh, made me feel like I was a fucking stalker or something. Like, I'll threaten you with a restraining order or I'll call the police if you come by. And acting like you're afraid of me. After we'd been, you know, really intimate for over six months. I wanted to marry her, you know. I was madly in love. And I was just cut off. With no understanding why other than I don't have much to offer other than love. So then I was put in my own healing by myself. 
my own projection of myself. I had to look in the mirror and do a lot of work. And, you know, we're all like fucking snowflakes. We're all beautiful. We were all put here by the divine. Some of us don't realize it. We're just a meat suit. The bright shining light inside and what you do and how you feel about other people. So where are the magics at? I mean, you don't need anybody else. I don't need anyone. I just want some someone to be there. I wanted my soulmate to be there. So it's been two and a half months or so since the breakup. I've grown a lot. I've healed a lot. I've let it all out. It's either time for reconciliation, you know, like someone needs to reach out to me and tell me that they're sorry for ghosting me and that I didn't deserve that. And they want another chance or they want closure or want to give me closure either way, just like the respect, you know, and then, you know, in my heart of hearts, I hope they want to like reconcile and like. We just hug each other and realize how much we really value and miss each other and how valuable we we just are as meat suits and, and spirits, you know? That it's not about what she has or what I have. It's not about any of that. It's not about this 3D world. It's about, like, Really true love. True love. That's what it's really about. And that the, the power of love could power a remarkable miracle. You know, my boss Alan is a is a writer, and uh, he's writing sci-fi for Hollywood. Like the next Star Wars or something. Or the next, uh, I don't know, whatever those blue people were. Uh, I know that your dreams are possible. I know that dreams are attainable. I feel like I lived a dream that this last year for about six months. And then it turned into a nightmare. So, um... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this negative shit. All the shit that I was involved in or happened to me. And I've given it all up to the universe. That there's no way I can do anything about it or handle it. And most of it's all in the past now. It's all about now. Right now. And the future. You can look back every once in a while just to check on things, but it's about right now and the future and maybe somebody will pop back into your, your right now or your future, or maybe you'll decide that, you know, it, it wasn't meant to be or, or whatever, but I don't think that's for you or me to decide. I think that's up to the universe. So I'm a fighter. I just keep trying. I just keep trying. That's all I could do. And then I, I'm looking out for my soulmate, you know. If it's not who I think it is. Then maybe... I'm intended to be somewhere else with someone else. I don't know. I don't know. I know that I deserve love. 
I know that I'm worth like a lot. I know that I have a lot to offer the world and people. And uh, I'm ready to just share as much as I can so that people will see in their own lives and their own stories and their own problems and their own stuff that there's some silver lining, that there's some amazing thing inside of you. And if you could just tap into it and tap into source and stay grounded, be clear, live in your highest vibration that you can. That's what really matters. So I hope you enjoyed this story. Um, it was a little all over the place. I'll try and make it better. But I think you get the point. I think you... I think you get the point. You can probably put the two and two together and... Figure it out. I love you guys. Have a blessed day.